Now let's talk about harmonics. Now what is a harmonic? Well, it's when you lightly place your finger on the string and you get a sort of whistling sound. Now, I don't think harmonics are really that complicated, but they often tend to get overcomplicated and overexplained. But you really don't have to know that much about harmonics to be able to play them well on the violin. So we're going to talk about what harmonics are and how they are notated in violin music. First off, there's two types of harmonics, natural harmonics and artificial harmonics. Let's talk about natural harmonics first. Natural harmonics are when you just put one finger down very lightly on one string. But first, let's think about an important concept. When you are putting a finger down on the string, you are changing the length of that string. Essentially, now we've got a shorter string than what we had if we were just playing an open string. And changing that string length is essentially what makes different pitches. And essentially what we're doing when we're playing a harmonic is we're allowing both sides of the string to vibrate. Think about this. If you just had one finger down, remember how you're changing the string length? Well, you're just letting everything on this side of the finger vibrate and you're not letting anything to the left of the finger vibrate. You can see this really well if you play on the G string. You can see this part of the string vibrating and that part isn't. But with a harmonic, you're allowing both sides of the string to vibrate. You can see how both sides are vibrating. And that's pretty cool. That's what makes a harmonic, gives it that special quality of sound. So if I've got about 13 inches right here from the bridge to the fingerboard, if I divide that in half perfectly, guess what I get? Harmonics on every single string. And that harmonic right there is the most common harmonic in violin literature. It's the easiest to sound and the easiest to play and it has a really good sound and quality because you're dividing the string equally in half. It's the simplest ratio you can get, two to one. And you can play that by just putting your hand up against the bout of the violin, kind of reach for your pinky. You can do it with any finger, but it's pretty easy with your pinky. And just lightly touch the string. And if you can't find it, just kind of move your finger around until you do. and it occurs in the same place on every string. Okay. So that is a natural harmonic. And that's just one natural harmonic. There's some other ones on the violin. Remember how I said it's dividing the string equally in half, and it's that simple ratio that makes it a really nice harmonic? Well, if we took the string and divide it equally into thirds, we would also get a harmonic, a relatively easy one to play. And that harmonic occurs right where the third finger is in first position. Just lightly touch that. Okay. And that harmonic is another pretty easy one to play. Let's try one more. What about the pinky on the fourth finger in first position? Now, this one's, it's kind of... That one's pretty easy too. You can also play it with your second finger up in third position. Like so. Now let's talk about artificial harmonics. So we talked about how we take this string, we measure it out and we divide it perfectly into different measurements and we'll get harmonics if we know those measurements. Well, we can change the string length. We already talked about that by putting a finger down. So if we put a finger down, now we're dealing with a different size of string. So we're gonna have different harmonics, right? This is essentially like an artificial nut. The nut is this little piece right here where your strings are resting on. That's kind of the, the end of the string lengths. So we're creating a different size string when we put a finger down. So we'll get different harmonics. Now, if I could have three hands and I could put a finger here, and then keep that finger down there 
and still play, I would be able to get all those same harmonics that I got with an open string. But it's a little hard to do. So there's really, the only type of natural harmonic that's relatively easy to do is to put your first finger down on any note really, we'll start in first position, and reach up for your fourth finger. So you're leaving your first finger down but reaching up for fourth finger, and you get a harmonic. And essentially what you're doing is creating the same harmonic that you did with your third finger between the open string and the third finger. Now you're just creating it between the first finger and the fourth finger. So those are natural and artificial harmonics and how you play them on the violin. But now let's look into how you would notate that on the violin. Here's how we would notate harmonics on the violin. Remember how I said this is the most common harmonic? On the violin. Well, here's how you would notate it. So that first note is an E and it's on the E string. That's the harmonic on the E string. And we notate it with a four and a zero underneath it. And sometimes that zero might also look like a circle or an O, but it means the same thing. When you see a four and a zero, and yet only one note, this is not a double stop. We're not being told to play, you know, a unison. We're being told to play a harmonic because there's only one note, one stem. So that's the harmonic that occurs on the E string. The next one is an A. That's the one that occurs on the A string. The next one is a D. That's the harmonic that occurs on the D string. And the last one's G. It's the harmonic that occurs on the G string. Okay. That's it. That's, the, that's generally what you will see for those harmonics on the violin. Now, occasionally you'll see the four left off because, you know, you don't always have to play it with a four. You could play it with a three or a two or a one. It doesn't matter. So sometimes you'll just see that note and a an zero or in that little circle, that little open. And you just have to think through and think, well, I can't play that note on an open string. So what's that telling me? It's telling me to play it as a harmonic. What about those other natural harmonics that we talked about? Like the one down here where your third finger is in first position. Well, here's how you'll commonly see that harmonic notated. You'll see it with a little diamond note head. And this is telling you to play a harmonic where that note would normally be played. So for instance, the note head, it's diamond shaped, but it's on a G. Okay, so think about where that G is on the violin. Where would you play it if it were just a solid note? Well, I would play that note right here on the D string with my third finger. So now to play that harmonic, I just lift it up. And there I have it. Sometimes you'll also see um, maybe a three and a zero above that note. That's telling you to play it as a harmonic as well. Now let's take a look at this passage right here. I love this one because it's showing us lots of different ways to notate harmonics. Okay, so look at this first one right here. All right, and it says H-A-R-M. So it says harmonic. You won't get that. That's pretty rare. This, is, this little passage has a lot of ways that to let you know these are harmonics if you can't figure it out. So it says harmonic. You also have the numbers 20201010. That's letting you know, okay, it's just one stem. I'm not playing a double stop here. So that must be a harmonic. And it's letting you know which finger to play it on. And by default, it's also telling you what string to play it on as well. It's also telling you what position to play the note in as well. And then you've also got the diamond shape note heads. So we've got a lot of indications here to tell us that this is a harmonic. The word harm, the twos and the zeros, the numbers and the zeros, and then the diamond shaped note heads. You won't always get three indications. You could just get the diamond shaped note head or you could get the finger numbers and the zero. And then if you really are confused, then they might give the H-A-R-M in there. But since this is telling us what position to play it in essentially, because where would we put a two on an A? Well, we could only do that in third position. Right? 
Where would we put a two on a D, third position? Where would we put a one on a G, third position? And where would we put a one on a C, third position? It's essentially telling you to play that all in third position. But let's look at another measure a few measures later. Right here, do you see it has the E? And it just has a zero on it. It doesn't have the four and the zero. The note isn't shaped like a diamond. That's our natural harmonic, our pretty standard natural harmonic that you'll see all the time in the violin. And you might think, wait a second, these are both natural harmonics, right? Yes, they are. How come the ones lower down in first position or third position, how come those get diamond shaped note heads, but this one doesn't? Well, it just doesn't, honestly. That one is so common, I think you tend to see it more with numbers, not really with the diamond shaped note heads. But keep going, look ahead, there's another indication down here of a natural harmonic. All right, do you see how it has the three and the zero above the A? So that's telling us to play that natural harmonic, but with a third finger like that. Normally we play that one with a fourth finger, but because of the fingering, it's telling us to do it with the third finger. And then the next measure, you get another harmonic on that G quarter note. Now it's telling you to do it with your fourth finger for an open. So that's how you notate natural harmonics. Let's take a look at how you would notate artificial harmonics. So if you have an artificial harmonic, you're just going to see a little solid note, and then on top of that, you're going to see that diamond shaped note. And that's telling you that this is a artificial harmonic. So the solid note is telling you where to put your finger. And then the harmonic is telling you where to place your finger lightly to get that harmonic. And these generally are going to occur where your first finger is going to go on the solid note, and then your pinky will go on the harmonic note. Now, people try to make this really complicated. For instance, uh, look at this. Ah, what in the world is this trying to tell us? Well, this is a really complicated way to notate harmonics. And honestly, I don't think you're ever going to see this. Definitely not in beginning and intermediate violin literature. But what this is showing you is a couple different things. So the solid note is telling you what string to play the harmonic on. So you see how there's a lot of G's on the bottom, the solid note, that's telling you to play all of these on the G string. Then you've got the diamond shaped note head telling you where to actually place your finger. And then the note in parentheses is telling you what note or what pitch is actually sounding when you play that note. Okay, now most of the time you're not going to see that parentheses because honestly the composer doesn't even care if you know what pitch is actually being produced. They just want you to put your finger in the right place. They've already done all the hard work of figuring out what pitch they want there. You don't really have to know it. Just put your finger where they told you to and you'll be fine. You often not even see that lower note, that solid note underneath it telling you what string to play on because it's pretty obvious. I mean, where else can you play a B? Well, you can only play that note on the G string, so of course you're going to play it on the G string. So this is a really confusing way to write natural harmonics, and I don't think you're going to see it very much at all. You're more often just going to see a diamond-shaped note head or a number and a zero to indicate a natural harmonic. And then for artificial harmonics, you'll have a solid note head and then like a double stop on top of that, a diamond shaped note head to let you know where to lightly place your finger. And that's really all you need to know to be able to play artificial harmonics and natural harmonics on the violin. If you enjoyed this lesson on harmonics, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. And if you really enjoy music theory and how it applies to violin playing, I suggest you check out my online studio where you have lots of options for different videos on music theory and how it's so important to the violin. So I'll put a link in the description below for you to check out my online studio. I'm Laura from Meadowlark Violin. Happy practicing.